Hello. Oops. Hello. Uh, quite a few people ask me how I do um, my stuff. So I thought I'd do a quick tutorial for of a little spaceship or something uh, from start to finish. Uh, so we'll, we'll keep the default cube. Let's get rid of all of this other stuff. Uh, yeah, let's start with this. So most of my stuff is uh, Boolean modeling. So let's um, let's start off making a nice rudimentary shape, this guy. Uh, let's, let's squish it down a bit. And then um, let's select this face and then E to extrude it out a bit. And then let's extrude this bit out, E to extrude that bit out. And then let's grab this and just move it on that axis, which is G to grab it and Y, because I want to move it on the Y axis alone. And extrude that out again. And then let's uh, go into edge mode, which is two, grab this ver edge here. And then grab this and then move it on the x axis only. And then let's uh, push Shift Z to go to wireframe mode 1 to set the verts. Let's grab all of these verts here and move those a bit closer. So we're going to mirror this. This is going to be a mirrored object when it's done. Uh, and then let's Shift Z to go back to solid. And then let's make this a bit. Thinner, so let's slow down. That was cool, and then let's do the same with back here, and let's do the same here as well. I think that'll be a good start, and then let's get get rid of these faces here. In fact, let's do this. Let's go. Um, make the origin for these transforms a 3D cursor, and if we scale these to X, they'll basically go to the middle of the world, which will just help when we do our mirroring. So make sure they're scaled to the middle of the world. And if we now uh, let's freeze our transform as well. If we go to modify here, add a mirror. There you go. So that'll be the basic. Oh, let's actually do this as well. Let's grab that edge here, and let's. Then, uh, yeah, and then let's also grab this thing here. Let's extrude that a little bit. So that'll probably do for the basis of our little spaceship. So let's um, let's apply that mirror for the time being. You can always play that. And then what I generally tend to do is a lot of Boolean stuff. I've got an interesting shape here anyway. So let's just Shift D to duplicate it. Let's move it up. Let's shrink it a bit. Move it up again. Maybe make it a bit thicker. And then that'll be our, probably our first Boolean. So if we select, I have. Um, if you go into Preferences here. I just make sure it's, it should be loaded by default. If you do here, ball. Yeah, there you go. I've got ball tool. I've got that turned on. That's the add-on I use a lot. Um, so make sure that's turned on. So now what happens if you select your boolean object and then the actual your main object last, and then press Control I. Uh, that didn't work. Oh, the other way around. No. Let's move that out of things. All. So yeah, press so let's select your Boolean object and then your main object last. Press Control I, and then you can see now this is starting to become a Boolean object. And now I can move this around until it kind of does tend to kind of glitch a little bit so you've got to just play with it until it doesn't glitch too much. Now you see I'm getting an error here it's an inside face which means there must be an inside face in my actual geo so let's let's fix that before I do anything else. So if I press shift Z and then press 3 
then there's tab and then pass three yeah these have some inside faces here let's get rid of those doing something interesting so I'm just going to apply that anyway uh, delete that and now let's grab this again let's duplicate it let's turn it over I'm pressing control when I spin then that will snap it to um, I don't know like 10 degree This time I'm going to press that, I'm going to press that, I'm going to press Control and Plus. And I've added them now, and let's just apply that. So let's turn on in here, let's turn on cavities as well so I can get a little bit of sense of what I'm making. That's already a bit more interesting. And then let's grab the whole thing again, Shift Duplicate it, let's take it underneath. And then let's scale it a bit again, make it a taller, and let's take it out of the bottom. I can move it around to see what it looks cool. Let's make it longer. Yeah, quite like that. Let's apply that. Get another guy. And then I think I'm going to add some more smaller details here. So let's grab this again. Let's shrink it a bit. And let's grab it up here, grab it up here. And another brilliant operation. And I'm just going to work on one side and then we'll mirror it again at the end. So we're just basically doing small cuts to get something interesting. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. So let's apply that. You can keep all these live, but I tend not to. Uh, let's start, let's reverse this, we'll rotate this round. It's going to be a good thing. Uh, yeah. and let's do it again. And then grab it up. I'm basically doing this for a good few minutes. That's how I tend to do my stuff. It's nice and quick. I mean, it's it's kind of um, a bit of a kind of a concept that's sketched to begin with, really, because you, I'm not working with any kind of preconceived idea. I'm just having a go until it makes a shape that I'm, I'm, I quite like, which is a bit messy. I find you can end up having some quite interesting shapes and. Definitely lots of stuff that maybe you weren't planning to begin with. Yep, I have that. Um, do that, 
and then let's do some let's if we add like another let's just add another cube and this time we're gonna we'll squish that bit, oh yeah let's turn it off back to individual origins squish that like that and then if you want to top it then just tab and then let's get that and we'll do that way and then we'll add a quick array to that and let's do that and let's add five of them cool let's apply that i don't need to keep that live and then put it in here from that that's cool yeah that's cool we'll apply that and we'll use this again I like that shape so we'll grab that and I'll put it in maybe here put another boolean there now do I want to go all the way through let's not let's just notch a bit out so let's do that top or bottom uh, that's a bit too repetitive so let's go to the bottom so we can't see it And let's move it down a bit as well. Cool, and let's apply all that. And then let's make uh let's get another cube. Let's push it, let's gonna elongate it a bit. Let's con control A and uh, sh yeah, control A and let's freeze these transformations. And then if we press tab and two, and then let's press control B and then we'll add a a bevel to it that'll do and then this will make a nice shape to cut out of I think or maybe that could be the beginning of a booster or something yeah we'll do that so let's move actually now I call it that area though I'm going to go underneath Yeah, cool. And we'll apply that. Uh, let's get rid of that. And then what else do we want in there? Maybe some sticks out. So, oh no, if we'll wait, that would we'll draw a mirror for us. So, we should be, hopefully, be able to select that now. Press tab. Let's go to the top view. Shift uh, Z to go transparency. Or you can use the transparency uh, wireframe button up here. And let's we're going to mirror it. So this is the good side. So we're going to get rid of all the faces on this side. Minus few. Cool. And then uh, let's shift so they're going to get out of that. So let's mirror this again. And let's OK that straight away because that's cool. And then we can start adding some details, I guess. So we got little flaps and little flat, you know, extra little bits of modelling and stuff like that. Um, I think I'm going to add a kind of pilot area. So let's rotate that like that. Um, I'm going to make it Millennium Falcon. Millennium Falcon is the coolest spaceship ever made. So let's make it unsymmetrical. Let's make it the other side. No, let's keep it that side. Let's show. So that's cool. Let's take this guy, extend that. Right, that's the cockpit. So I'm going to. Control and plus because I want this to be together. Let's apply that. Um, don't need that anymore. And then let's put some on this side just to make it cool as well. So let's shrink that a bit. Let's 
Uh, if we grab and then press Shift Z, it'll only it'll only walk, uh, move around on a kind of a flat axis on a plane, which is a nice little thing. So let's put it there. Let's make it a bit smaller. Let's add that. Control plus, and then the pile. You can actually do Control Shift plus, and it will just bake it in straight away. But um, yeah, that's pretty cool. I think there's a bit more detail up here, so let's just grab this guy. And then let's do Shift D and then Y, and then let's shrink it, and then grab it again, and let's so I'm basically just shrinking it. I'm just cutting that into there to give me some detail there, and then let's push it in a bit more. Yeah, I don't know. Apply that, kill that. And then what else should we do? Let's add some tiny little details. So let's add a, a fin of some description. Nice and like that. Let's go here, let's go to Wi-Fi view. So let's control A to cut transformations and then tab into it. Let's go to the wireframe, select them all, and let's bevel them all a little bit. Actually, before we do that, let's take this guy and this guy and let's bevel that up. So control B to bevel, and if you use a mouse wheel, you can add more divisions. So that'd be cool. We'll do that. And then once we've done that, let's go select the oops. Let's select press three, let's select the top face and the bottom face. And just bevel those a bit with but oh there you go. Oops, let's have too many faces here. Yeah, that's cool. Um and we'll probably need to add some kind of joining mechanism there, but and then let's grab this thing again. Cool, set those two. Let's press Control J to join them up. Control A to freeze all the transformations and then we'll mirror them again. Cool, and then let's also select this guy here. Let's set the whole thing to smooth. It messes up massively. Hit this uh, thing here. Go. Hit this thing here and go to auto smooth and then we can dial this in until our circles are circles but our flats are flat. There it is. Uh, and then anything else we want to do to this? I feel like I need something extra on here, so maybe we'll do the whole thing again, shrink it down, turn it upside down. Let's take that and see what happens. way too much
Yeah, that's way too much. Let's go right there and see if we can get anything out of there. No, let's not. Let's cancel that guy. That's a bad move. Not sure to. Um, Kill that modifier. Let's just add a new cube. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So let's add that to the other. Oh, I press Control Shift and plus this time, which basically does the modifier, does it straight away and bakes itself in. So there's no undoesies on that. I've got a weird thing here which I need to fix. What's that? Let me fix that. So then we just press K. Oh, doesn't like that. This is the weird one. When you're boolean, it can be a bit messy, but and then oh, there's more on the side, and I'm going to get all oh, these more. I'm going to get all these points here, and I'm going to just merge them all the center. Yeah, go. Cool. So that's going to be our special time being. Um, what I generally want to do next is select the object, let's make give it material. We'll call it hull. I normally divide everything up into material, so like if it's got like a car, it might have rubber for the wheels, chrome, and then you know metal paint. Um, this is gonna be one, I'll do this in one thing, so this will be hull. Um, And then what's this going on? Oh yeah, let's let's add that to this thing. So let's set that and control J. Oops, let's apply the modifier first. Control J. And that's one object in there. Cool. And then tab, I select all the faces and I just auto smart UV project. That'll do that. And then I'll export that into a new folder as an OBJ. I normally do. So let's make a new folder. Let's go documents, blender scenes. We'll call this make a new folder. Ship tutorial, chip tut. And then in here I'll make a painter folder. Tart. Selection only, otherwise I'll set the whole thing in the scene. Uh, materials group, so that's what I always do. Let's call that. Cool. And now we'll come back there in a bit. Let's go to subs I use substance painter, always have done. So I've got Substance Painter open, so the first thing I do is let's go new and then I use this thing here, so I use that PBR Metal Roughness, that's the setup I use. Uh, file, let's select my OBJ that I just exported. Uh, so let's go to the Ship Tut Painter and there's my OBJ. So we'll leave that as 1k for time being, we can change it on export. So here's my thing, I don't bother using that thing, so let's just go through the alley. Uh, and then the first thing we do is go to texture setting settings, texture set settings here. Um, and we're going to bake our maps 
so this basically breaks our normal world space occlusion curvature that kind of stuff i don't use id uh, use thickness so we'll bake our mesh maps give that a second Hit OK, and there we go. So you can already see, kind of, you know, if you look at um, the maps here, you can kind of see the occlusion and the curvature. So this, the curvature is basically the edges. So it will let you know, it will let Substance Painter know where the edges are when you want to kind of add noise breakup and stuff like that. Uh, so let's just start with Smart Materials because they're a really good starting point. And then uh, there's lots of pre-made materials here. I've got a few pre-made materials here too, but I'll try and use, I'll use the uh, the ones it comes with. Uh, so let's start with uh, plastic dirty. No, let's put plastic dusty. Yeah. So we'll check that on there. And now we'll whiz away. There you go. So it's giving us some kind of look with kind of you know a bit of grime in the in the bits where it get grime. Uh, and then if we go to the layers here, we can kind of see how that's made up. Um, this is the base layer here, so I'm going to change the colour of it. A bit darker, and I'm going to change the colour of the dirt as well. I quite like the plastic material. It's quite a shiny plastic, but I quite like that. It's quite sci-fi. You can see here, the substance doesn't quite know what to do with my terrible topology but I just don't bother fixing it and just carry on going. Now let's add another material, let's add uh, steel gun painted, that's a cool material. And then what I'll probably do now is select that steel gun painted and I'll put I'll put this mask thing on here and I'll add a black mask which basically turns it off and then I go into here and then I can if I go to brushes here or alpha is one or two let's find brushes I can basically paint where I want that material to be X to, to invert the brush. Oh, what I should have done is turned on mirroring. Let's do that again. Turn on mirroring and then it should, yeah, there you go. And I'm pressing shift to do a straight line. Decals to our spaceship. And let's add another layer and then let's put a bit of colour. I 
And then once we add a black mask, and we'll do a few color decals as well. We've mentioned now let's do the stripes, I think. So we get to better brushes. Cool, and then one last layer here. So if we go to this guy here, I'm not quite sure where the extra layer. This is empty now, this layer. If we go down here and we turn off this alpha, we turn off the color, the height, the roughness, and the metal. So we've only got normal. And then we've got hard surfaces here. We can do some normal details. This is really cool. So if we grab, uh, let's say grab this guy, drag it into here, we can now stamp that guy into there. And then there's loads of nice little extra details we can add here. So we can add like a few of those. And put a couple on here as well. And then let's get some else. This is a little door thing here that's cool. Got to be careful where we have it because turn symmetry off if we have one this bit because we don't want it on both sides. Let's turn some up here again. Let's have it one here. Let's turn it out one here. And then let's have some on this bit here. Which we have this thing's called. Oops, I'm just off. Right, that would do for us. Uh, normally you spend a lot more time doing that and making it nice and close to the bottom, but we're doing quick. So let's save that. Um, we'll put that in our ship tutorial. And then we'll export the textures. And we'll export them in the same place. It should be called hull or whatever. So let's also make them double them up this time. Cool. And then let's go back to Blender and then let's select our spaceship. And now if we go to shading, now I've got another really good add-on added uh, turn on here which is called what's it called node wrangler i think it is yeah node wrangler so i turn that on and it does a bunch of stuff but what i really like about it is if you now press this guy here and control shift and t you can basically find your um textures so if i select all of my textures that just out, I wrote out, and then press principal texture setup. It'll just automatically plug those all in. It'll automatically plug all those in, ready to be used. So let's make a nice little scene for it, shall we, very quickly? Uh, let's do space scene. So if we go to the environment here, let's go to shading network and do that. So if we go to world, and let's make the room. So currently we've got this just background colour going into our world. So let's kill that. 
Let's add noise shader. Input, let's find a what's it? texture. Yeah, here we go. let's find a noise texture. But then uh, that'll be some kind of crazy color setup. That's fine. And then let's go add a vector uh, converter a color ramp. And it just turns us from black to white, but it also lets us control this business. So let's make it. Well, let's put some, let's put a value of about 200 in here. The scale. Very noisy. And then let's find. Let's look at our star field. Yeah, it is. It's pretty dark in there. So. It's not really that much by the stars, so let's put in a couple of lights. Let's put sunlight. Uh, backlighting things always makes them look cool. Because you get all that nice texture all over. But we do really need some fill light. Now there wouldn't actually be any fill light in space because of this space and there's no but let's just say let's pretend there's a planet over here and it's bouncing some light back. So let's add another uh, area light. And this one's gonna be over here. Going back at it. And this area light is gonna be slightly bluish and a lot brighter. Not that blue. And let's do that a little bit more. Cool. So let's look at that there and then let's uh, let's add a camera, shift A, add a camera, and then if you find your view in the viewport you like, if you press control Alt and zero, your camera snaps to where your view is. And then let's make this a long lens camera. That's always, that's always good for sci fi. 100 now. And then let's move it back. And then let's just turn off all the grid. So I think our star field could be a bit denser. So let's make that 300. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, so I think it needs a bit more fill. Uh, let's also add, um, if you go into the render settings here, we'll also turn on all these bits and bobs so we get a bit more stuff going on. So we'll turn on ambient occlusion. Um, I usually play this number to make sure that it's kind of doing something useful. So let's make that uh, two meters, maybe a bit more, maybe five meters. There you go. So we've got. A little bit of darkening in there, let's, yeah, five minutes will do for us. Um, and then let's turn on Bloom as well. Bloom is just a kind of, you know, nice little effect. Um, we'll turn on Screen Face Reflections, we'll turn on Motion Blur, because we might have it later. Let's turn on Volumetric Shadows, we haven't got any volumes in there yet, but we might do. Uh, and let's do High Bit Depth Rate, and then I guess that'll do, because I'm using Sunlight, I might just increase this cascade size, which will include, increase our uh, shadow map uh, resolution. Cool. Uh, let's also add 
let's add a planet. So if we press, let's just add a plane. We'll make that pretty big for the time being. And then let's um, go back to the object. We're in shader view, so we'll go back to the object here, give it a new shader. And then let's uh, take the specularity down the roughness up. And then let's put a, a nice image in here. So I think I've got a couple of spare Im images of the earth. There you go, let's use this one. So let's put it in there. What I tend to do is I'll probably put that in the uh, emission as well, so it's nice and bright. And then I'll also, if I add a color ramp to this, here and put the color into the color ramp i'll also add this to the alpha because i want to start in this black area here i really want the stars shining through so but to get to the alpha alpha working i'll have to go into the shader settings here and put blend mode to alpha hashed and there you go things there and i don't need a shadow for it so i'll turn that on but as you can see because this is just taking that image some of this stuff's going transparent as well so the color ramp is very good at um I can just do this basically and make sure that stuff is fairly um, opaque. So there you go. So the stars are shining through that bit. That'll leave for me. So if I go back to my camera. So what I want to do is now rotate this. Well, first I want to make sure it's the right. Uh, let's go to individual origins. Yep. And then we'll scale that so it's um, that's how it is. There you go. So I think that's about right for that image. And then obviously we need to make it absolutely massive. And we need to put it quite far away. As you can see, it's now going out of my camera clipping range. That's fine if I go to my camera and I'll go to here. You guys, I'll make that 3000 or something like that. There you go, so that's again. And then we can rotate this. Let's do it on its let's do it locally. There you go. Then rotate that on X. So we've had that like that, I guess. Yeah, something like that maybe. Uh, let's add a little camera movement to it as well. So if we, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create an empty. Uh, here we go. And that'll be, let me just move it around here. That'll be my camera pivot. And then I'm going to uh, select my camera. Oh, there's my camera. Here it is. And select the empty. And then I'm going to control P. I'll keep the transform. And now I can let me look for the view again. Let's go to uh, animation. And I'm going to hit I here to set a rotation. And I'll go to, let's do 200 frames. Let's go to the last frame and hit and rotate it a bit. Oops. And Z. That'll do. I on that rotation. Right, let's go back to the beginning and let's get the full, the full of full uh, range of this background image. So rotate and then I press it again. There we go. And so I for my rotation. And then another thing I'm going to do here is if I go to the graph editor, I select, press A to select all my keys, and I press T and I make them linear. So there's no um beezering in and out of the curve so the, the camera speed is constant. And if I go to the layout here, let's look at that. Yeah, that will do. In fact, come on, let's add a little camera shake. I know it's space, so it'll be a fairly st steady camera, but a little camera shake might help. 
So let's set our camera. Now there's no keys on our camera. The keys are only on the actual empty. So we need to put at least one key on our camera. We want it in rotation as well. So I'll press I and then put a rotation key on. And now this means if I select, uh, these are the three channels for our rotation. If I select one of those and hit this little arrow here, I can get a modifiers tab and I can add things. So I'm going to add a noise modifier to my camera. So I hit play so I can see what's happening. So it's obviously a bit crazy. So I'll make this like 12, I think. And I make the strength 0 0.01, I think. I get a tiny bit of noise in there, a bit organic noise. And I call like that. So I'm going to copy this, which is this guy here. And I'm going to go to the next key. I'm going to paste it. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to offset it so it's not exactly the same position. And I'm going to go over here. I'm going to paste it again. And I'm going to offset it the opposite way. So now I've got a tiny little bit of camera movement on my camera. So I'm going to, go to layout and let's look at that through the actual view. So that's quite nice. Uh, another thing I tend to do as well while I'm here is if I go to color management down here, um, you can kind of select the look you want for your thing. So I think it's it's already on medium contrast. I'll probably leave it on medium contrast. But what I do is I use I like to use these curves here. So for instance, I'm going to bring the blacks away just a little bit, just so it's not pure black. I think it just makes it look a bit more photographic. And I might change the curve a little bit so it's a little bit kind of more contrasty. And I've got this blue curve here, and this is just more of a photographic thing to make it a little bit more like film. So I like to put a bit more blue into the, the dark areas, and I'd like to take a bit of blue out of the light areas. But that's this is purely to taste. We could also at this stage have a play with a little bit of depth of field. I don't know if there'd be a great deal, but we can certainly have a go. If I can just find my camera. And then if we go to this guy here and turn depth of field on, and then if we make our target the spaceship, and then uh, let's make it seven blades. Let's make it um, a two, which means the depth of field is kind of, um, the bulky will be taller which um, makes it look a bit more anamorphic and then let's play with the f-stop here I mean it wouldn't go nuts but that's quite interesting so you can see what it's doing with the stars in the background there maybe it wouldn't be that much but let's just do a little bit let's go to 1.2 1. 1. it's a pretty fast lens but I think it's fine and then let's hit class. That looks pretty interesting. Um, should we also add a little bit of an animation to our spaceship as well? So let's I to give it a rotation key there. And let's give it another rotation key here. Let's rotate that on Y or something like that. And then let's, I'm going to rotate this on Y on the first key there, so it's a bit more. That's quite interesting. And I'm once again, I'm going to go here and I'm going to press all, press T, linear. I want I want it to be constant that speed. And let's play. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Cool. Uh, I think we're ready to set up the comp for that now. Actually, before we comp it, let's do one more thing. Uh, I know there's no volume in space, uh, but I always like it to add, adding it to image because I think it always does interesting things. So let's just quickly add a small volume because sometimes it can just look like a nice kind of sun glare because there is a sun in our image somewhere. So what I've done is I've added the volume through the volume scatter. I've got the density down quite low. And I'm now playing the um, anastrophe, which kind of lets me know if the it. I think it works if, if light scatters when it's backlit or when it's frontlit more. So I think a minus uh, number means it scatters more when it's frontlit. I think zero is kind of just both, and then I think the plus numbers is when it's better uh, better backlit. So I'm going to do that a bit, and then I might even move my key my sunlight. Just so it's a bit more visible. So where is it? It's there. So I'm going to rotate it 
around wire bit. Yeah, maybe that'll do, yeah. Yeah, that'll do. So I know it's not, it's a bit of a cheat having, um, shouldn't really have atmosphere around here, but I just like that little extra lift it does there. It makes it feel more photographic to me. Uh, and what else are we going to do now? So let's ready for compositing. So if we click on uh, the compositor node, uh, and we'll use nodes here, and then I usually turn this window into the image viewer. Uh, and I set this to a render result. So if I hit this guy here or press F12 or go over here and render the image, we'll update the image. And as we're in EV, this only takes, what, three seconds? And now we can start adding our nodes to this, our node graph. So the first thing I normally do is add a filter and add um, some of the glares. So I'll add the glare node as it comes in. And I normally get this for glow at first. So if you put mix to one, you're basically seeing only the glare nodes. If I take this threshold down, I'll start getting. So that's glaring every single value in the image. So even the black somehow is glowing. But if I increase this value, it'll only pick the hot spots of the image. So I think that that'll probably do. And then I might, yeah. So now if I put this back to zero, No, I think if I put this to 0 0.5. No, it's 0, isn't it? It's 0. That is now adding glow to my edge. So I can test it easily by pressing M to turn it off. There you go. And M to turn it back on. And I can kind of see before and after. So that's quite nice. So I'm going to now duplicate that node again. And this time, rather than being the fog glow, I'm going to use streaks. And now this will do a different thing. You see, it kind of does this. I want, I want my streaks horizontal. So I'm going to do is I'm going to have two streaks. I'm going to turn the mix back up to one, so I can just see what the streaks are doing. Uh, and I'm going to angle offset. I think it's 90 here. No, maybe it was zero. And then my fade, I'm going to increase my fade. Cool, and I'm going to take my threshold down a bit to maybe, no, threshold up. So I only really want to pick out the, the pink, the highlights for this stuff. Yeah, that'll do. And then I'll put that back to zero. And it should be fairly, uh, let's have a look, if I press M on this glare node here, I'll turn it on and off. There, they're fairly small, but they're something I quite, they're something I quite like. So that's my streaks, and then what else can I normally add? Uh, let's add a... a lens distortion as well. So I'll click that guy in there. And I normally put this to like 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and I'll just bend the image as I was, you know, I can see here actually where it's, where it's distorting the lens. And if I put in uh, fit, it'll basically reframe the image so that's within, so I guess for those, those edges, and if I press M here, you can kind of see the before and after. So it's subtle, but it helps. And then I normally, I quite like adding this jitter as well, which basically just adds a little bit of noise little kind of color noise to the uh, to the render it's a bit more like a, a bit like a film grain type thing okay let's also have a go at seeing if we can get some um, some nice kind of lens dirt lens grime on there as well uh, so if we bring an image in so I've got one I found on uh, uh, the internet somewhere 
apply it to that. And then we just find out. Cool, and my image looks basically like that. So it's quite bright, kind of bokeh, schmutz, lens dirt. Uh, so what we're going to do is we'll bring this over here and we want to get a blur. So the first thing we do is add a blur node and we'll put it on our image and let's make, I don't know, 200 or something. 200, cool. And then we'll get our bio key image and we'll put a, a resize node on this. Uh, let's find them somewhere in here. There'll be a just a little resize scale. Da -da. Oh no, there's another one. And we'll put it to uh, scene size. There you go. So just in case our image is a different size to our render size. And then we'll do a multiply now in the color channel. So we're going to mix and we'll set it to multiply and we'll put our blurred image in and our bokeh image in. Let's have a look at that. We oh, need to probably flip those around. Oh, that's a scale. Where's our image gone? So we've got our render size, not scene size, there you go. And we'll put fit as well. So we'll get rid of these bars here. Oh, no, stretch is what we want, sorry. Perfect. Uh, and we get that mush, and then if we put an, another colour mix in here as well, and we'll put this in. Uh, Add. So we're putting our render before the blur in there and our lens schmutz there and this should be not with all this kind of stuff our image. There we go. So we've got a bit of a kind of a dirty image. It's quite nice. It's especially nice when you get to these edges here. So that will kind of light up here, but when it gets to over here it'll be a bit darker. So that's obviously in your blur functions there. So if we reduce this this these shouldn't get these um brighten up as much now obviously we've got a, a factor here where we can reduce the look of it a little bit so i'll fill it down a bit oh, let's put it back up again cool uh i think that'll probably do for us so we've got a camera little camera animation we've got a little comp so I think now is our render settings. Uh, I've always used, um, I like that this is a movie, so let's find a place for it. What am I calling this thing again? I've lost my thread. Ship tutorial, yeah, let's make an atom folder in here. So ship, tart, atom. And we'll call it ship. And then P001. I always put an underscore here so it doesn't mess up, mess up with the frame numbers. Accept that. And then I'm going to go to MPEG video. I don't bother. You probably should um, do individual frames, but I just don't too lazy. And then I put 9000 for this. And this means it works out quite well for Instagram. Uh, that'll leave for that, and then I'll save my scene, and I'll go to the rendering viewport here, and I'll just go render animation, and that should probably be about four seconds for the animation, and then about 
15 seconds for the comp or 10 seconds for the comp. Oh, that's pretty quick actually. Obviously the more nodes you have in the composite, the, the longer it takes for that, that last port. Uh, but this is pretty quick. Cool.